Usually facts are numerical values and numerical values it's very intuitive to add those values up and this is what we usually want to do in our analytics in our BI reporting to add those values up to totals. But now this cannot be done for all of the facts because the totals do not always make sense and therefore we want to distinguish between three different types of additivity in our facts. The first one is the fully additive fact. This is the most common type and it can be just normally added up across all of our dimensions and the result, the total, of course, still is meaningful and makes sense. And this is the most flexible and most useful fact because it can just be added up across all of the dimensions and has the most analytical value. But then we also have the semi-additive fact, which can only be added up across a few dimensions. So it's again less flexible and we will also see an example for that later on. Then last but not least, we also have the completely non-additive fact. This can not be added up whatsoever across any dimension. And we will also have a look at an example for that and how we can deal with these non-additive and semi-additive facts. But first, let's understand the common type, the additive fact. In this case, we see that we have a sales table of five different sales and we have the fact of the units sold. So for every of these sales, for every row, we see, for example, sale number three, we have two units sold. And now it makes sense to add up all of these values. In total, we have sold 10 units. This is a number that makes sense, that is meaningful. And we have gained that number by just adding up all of these values. So across all of the dimensions, we can add up these values and the number makes sense. So for example, we can group by the category and get meaningful numbers that make sense. And also we can just group by, for example, the name and the numbers do make sense. And also this is the case if we want to see this across the dates, we can add the values up across all of the categories, across all of the product names. And then for every single day, we get the number of units sold. And of course the number is meaningful and makes sense. So this is the most common type of our facts. But now we also have the semi-additive fact. And now we also want to see an example for that. So let's assume, and this is the most common example for a semi-additive fact, we have account balances. In this case, we have one row where we have in the first day an account balance of $50. And now we add $50 to that account. So in the next day, the account balance is now $100. And then again in the next day, there is no change. We have no money coming in and no money going out and therefore the value is still 100. But now of course it doesn't make sense to add up all of these values and get a total balance because the number in the end we have on our account is just $100 on the portfolio type 1 of course. But now what we can do is we can indeed add the values up across the portfolio types. So for example, for day number one, so we don't add up across the dates, but only across the portfolio type. So we have $50 plus in the same day, portfolio type two, $120. So 50 plus 120 is 170. And then in the second day, we have in total $270. So this does make sense if we want to add up those values across the portfolio types. But now we cannot add them up across the dates. So if we want to add up the total amount of balance, this doesn't really make sense because in fact, in the end, we only have $100 in USD cash and in the last day we have only $60 in portfolio type 2, so the stocks. 
And therefore, this is not possible to add up these values across the date because the numbers simply don't make any sense. And therefore, we cannot do that. It doesn't make any sense. And the date is also the typical example of a dimension that the values in a semi-additive fact cannot be added up across. So this is a very typical example here. But an alternative could be to just take the average Again, this could be across the date. And in this case, the average could make sense. So we can have a daily average and then get these numbers that we see. So this could be something that is possible for the semi-additive facts. But in general, we have to be very careful to use them in the right way so that we are not adding them up across all of our dimensions. So this is a typical example that we've seen, the account balance. So this is not possible to add up across the date dimension. But now, how does it look like if we have a non-additive fact? A non-additive fact is something that we have seen in here, where we have the price of a unit. And note that we can have multiple units sold. And then we, if we want to have the total revenue, would have to multiply the unit sold with the price per unit. And of course, the revenue is fully additive, but the price itself is not additive because we cannot add up all of the prices and then get something like a total price of a category, for example. This doesn't make any sense. And therefore, this is completely non-additive because we cannot add those values up in any way and get a meaningful value. And therefore, in this case, we have a non-additive fact. And even the average is very tricky. And we have to still consider the number of units sold to get a weighted average. So with these non-additive facts, we have to be very careful. And typical examples for those are, as we've seen, the price, but also oftentimes some percentages. So we cannot add them up usually. And then also ratios. So again, ratios cannot be added up. So for example, what is the inventory level in our warehouse? These are usually ratios that don't make sense to be added up. And now, how do we deal with those non-additive facts? Because they have limited analytical value. Some even argue to include them in a fact table. A better method would be to store the underlying value. So for example, if we have some ratio, we can store both the numerator and the denominator and then calculate our resulting values in our BI tools. So for example, in Power BI, we can make our own calculations with those underlying values. And with that, we have the best analytical value from these non-additive facts. So those non-additive facts have the lowest analytical value and we have to be most careful with them. And therefore, it is good to know about these three different types of facts in terms of the additivity. Now that we've already talked about the additivity, we also want to talk about what happens if we have nulls in our facts, which can be sometimes the case. So therefore, let's have a look at how we can deal with that. Usually, if we have nulls, this is not a problem at all because all of the aggregations that we are doing in SQL or also in our BI tools, such as Power BI, Tableau and so on, these null values can be dealt with very easily. So for example, in SQL, if we want to take the average of the incoming amount in our account. So for example, we have $50. The next day we have 100. So there were $50 incoming. And then the next day there was no change. So nothing was incoming. And therefore we have a null value in here. But now if we want to aggregate that, table, so all of the average, minimum, sums, we can easily get those numbers. So this is something that SQL and all of the other tools usually can deal with very easily. So therefore, this is usually nothing that we need to take special care about. 
But now oftentimes the only thing that we need to be a little bit careful is that if we, for example, want to have a look at the average, we see the average incoming amount is indeed 50 US dollars because when there were some transfers, the average of these transfers were 50 dollars, but the meaning can be a little bit misleading because on average we did not get 50 US dollars per day for example. And therefore in some cases it can make sense to replace the null values with real zeros if the meaning should be there was zero. But also null values can occur but then if they are real null values this is completely fine because all of the aggregations can still be done and make sense. The only thing that we need to be careful with nulls is in the foreign keys. So if we have a fact table and then there is for example no portfolio ID associated we should not use null values here at all because this can create some conflicts and lead to some missing data and some problems if we want to connect this to some dimension tables. In this case if we have null values because there is no portfolio type available then we should even create dummy values. So for example 999 or also any other number for example minus one or something that is quickly indicating that this is a special value and then we can also add this value of 999 into our dimension table. So for example it could be outdated accounts or sometimes also we have no date associated and then we can also just include some dummy value and include some dummy date. For example 1st of January 1900 and then we have all of the data and we can easily still connect those tables with the dimension and make sense of the data and don't lose any data. But in general we can easily deal with these null values and it's completely fine if we have in our facts null values. But there's one type of fact that we should not include in a fact table and these are the to date facts and we will quickly therefore also have a look at those in the next lecture. In this quick lecture we want to talk about the year to date facts. So these are specific calculations that are actually very problematic and therefore we want to discuss in this quick lecture how we can deal with those year to date calculations in our data warehouse. So this is something that is very commonly requested by the business users because they want to have those year to date or month to date calculations in their BI tool because they want to see it in their reportings and therefore we are tempted to just implement this by calculating those year to date or month to date facts and physically store them in columns in our data warehouse. And this can be true also for the month to date calculation, quarter to date, fiscal year to date and all of the different variations of basically for example just the revenue. So just the underlying value and we have all of these different variations. And this is now actually very problematic because these calculations are not in the defined grain of our fact table. Because you remember our fact table always has a defined grain. For example the daily level for example if we want to store the revenue then one row contains just the value of the revenue for each and every day. And now if we have values that are not in this same grain this is very problematic if now the users, the end users want to aggregate those values. So we want to make random aggregations across different dimensions, across the date dimension and so on. And then of course this will lead to wrong calculations and wrong aggregations. The values will just be overstated and in fact just not true and therefore this is something that we should avoid. So we should not store those results physically in our data warehouse. The better alternative is to just store the underlying value, for example just the revenue, in the defined grain, for example in a daily grain. 
And then, of course, we need to fulfill the need of the business users. And we can do that in the way of just calculating those two date variations. This is possible in all of the BI tools such as Power BI, Tableau, and also OLAP cubes can handle those year to date or month to date calculations very well. And this is now the preferred method. So we should not store the calculations physically in our data warehouse, but just calculate them in our BI tools. This is what we should take away from this lecture. And now that we've got this out of the way, which is a very common request, we can now focus on the very fundamental topic of the different variations of fact tables. So that's something we need to talk about. And we want to start with the most common type of fact table, which is a transactional fact table. And that's what we want to do in the next lecture.